system. And we are live on YouTube. See you in four minutes, guys. We're live on IG Live and on YouTube Live. Link in bio. Two minutes left guys see you in a couple of minutes ig live youtube live let us know in the comments and have any questions
Hi guys. Hi guys. Thank you for joining us today for another amazing session. We have free mind sessions on today and they're going to take, take us through collective Hi creative guys. consciousness. Hi guys. Thank you for joining us today for another amazing <laughs> You can keep talking. Yeah, so collective creative consciousness with free mind session today is going to be awesome. Tomorrow we have under our skin who will take us through their film festival coming up, see how you can apply and be part of the film festival. So thank you for joining us. Tell a friend to tell a friend to join us. Cheers. And now we're, hey guys. And now we're gonna play a pre-recorded uh, 25, 27 minute clip of Free Mind Session. And then they're gonna join in live and uh, continue with their session for another 45 minutes or so. And now we're gonna play the pre-recorded content. Thanks for tuning in. And we should just be appearing live YouTube right now. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Just getting the, the uh, stream back up and running. Welcome to Free Minds first virtual session. Um, we're pretty excited to be partnering with Nairobi Design Come Week to on Free Minds this month's first topic, virtual collective session. creative um, We're pretty excited with to the be partnering with together. Nairobi Design Come Week to on Free Minds this month's first topic, of virtual collective collaboration. Um, and we're pretty excited with to the be partnering with Nairobi Design Come to Week on Free Minds this month's first topic, virtual collective collaboration. And we're pretty excited to be partnering with Nairobi Design Come to Week on Free Minds this month's first topic, virtual collective collaboration. And we're pretty excited. Third time lucky, guys. Welcome to Free Minds' first virtual session. Um, we're pretty excited to be partnering with Nairobi Design Week on this month's topic, the collective creative consciousness with the theme of togetherness. Um, there has been a fusion of creativity collaboration and I hope that today we'll be able to dig deep onto the conversations towards that topic. A little bit about our icebreaker today, we are going to be partnering with Verbal Connections, a card game geared towards diving deep into different topics, whether it's your intimacy, deal breakers, relationships, and just those questions you want to ask somebody that you're dating, or you want to break the ice. Yeah, get yours, yeah, no matter the cost. Don't boss, I'm a floss out, yes, of course. Falsehood to the dollar, cash rules everything around us. Dollar, dollar, baby. Our panelist for today and we're also gonna do a bit of an icebreaker with our partner bubble connections so these people are going to introduce themselves and we're going to get into the game a little bit so on to my right hand side we have uh, we have Jeff um, founder and owner of APAD studios um, it's a build design studio uh, here in Nairobi we do uh, all sorts of production work and uh, live events Okay, thank you. And on to my left hand side. <laughs> it my left yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rosemary Wangare. I am a fashion and textile designer. Um, I'm also a baker, an artist, and I do makeup sometimes. Right. Room. 
I'm Blocker Beats. I'm a producer, DJ, sound engineer, rapper. Uh, I as well have my own agribusiness where we focus on organic farming uh, and yeah, an entrepreneur as well. Amazing. So these are the panelists, catalysts for today, who are going to be going through some of these interesting questions that I have for them. And I'm going to kind of give you this one, read it out, and we're going to sort of answer, you know, give our own thoughts on it. So, All right. Okay. So the card I have is... Is it more important to be tactful or truthful? Okay. So, Rosemary, uh, <laughs> we're putting you on the spot here. <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. Yes. <laughs> oh, personally. Are we supposed to say it like in general or personally? Just, I mean, I think this is just a question towards you uh, as a person and just getting us getting to know each other. Yeah. Personally, I'm more tactful than truthful. So the way I deliver things, um, I don't always have to be truthful, 100%, but very tactful in anything that I'm saying or doing, yeah. Okay. What about you, Anna? Uh, I would say I'm both, but I think I'd lean more to the truth side. I think it's just, I always like to have honesty and just straight up... Uh, Your moral compass yeah, exactly. is like intact. <laughs> yeah, so I can judge and then now be, you know, tactful, but yeah. Okay, what about you, Jeff? Uh, I'd like to think... I'm more tactful, but honestly, I'm probably more truthful. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's just easier to say what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, there's less thinking involved, and it's better for the other person to know. And, you know, sometimes if they, yeah, they get offended, they get offended. You know? uh, true. You know? I know. Yeah. I think it's it interesting. What it is. It's, I, think <laughs> it's okay. I think we're getting more, book, but I think for me personally, I'm truthful because mm -hmm. I, I cannot, I don't know, filtering things in my mind is not um, a, a common trait I have. If you know me, like, and just like bubble the area sometimes, and it's, it's sometimes it can be a bit too much for people to handle. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's probably on that side. So I'm gonna read this one. How do you define freedom? I think freedom for me is like what will entail like me being able to feel comfortable, but at the same time having the will to make decisions on my own without feeling the need of. Um, uh, like there's obviously the, the, the questions of asking somebody else how they would feel, but I don't know, freedom to me feels being able to have the liberty to make decision making on my own. Like, we're just talking only decision making, guys. Okay. <laughs> I know freedom could be on a scale. <laughs> yeah, how about you, Rosemary? Like, how do you, how would you define freedom? Well, when it comes to decision making, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the ability to 100% um, be my true self with no regrets, actually. Just that, being myself with no regrets. When I'm making a decision, I'm like, is this what I want, 100% with no regrets? Yeah, yeah. okay, I love that. How about you, Anna? Um, I would go, I don't know, I would say freedom, uh, freedom of opportunity. I think also when it comes to deciding, I think if everyone, regardless of your class, race, you know, ethnicity, if you all have the freedom to have that same opportunity and to have that same decision making, mm -hmm. I think yeah, that is the, the goal of, of having yeah, a, a, the freedom to decide to choose. If you had the power to do so, what would you change about today's society? Ha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I love this. All right. You go first, actually. No, I won't go first. I, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the power to change in terms of society, um, society has a lot of things. But one thing I would want society to be able to change is the act of cohost. That, that whole, I don't know what I can, what word I can use, but cohosting a lot of us as young people towards certain um, preconceived notions that are, are necessary. I feel like that. That energy sometimes is so off-putting for a lot of us. As a creative, um, we seem to be in a, in, a, in a tangent of we must do X, Y, Z, and if, so, if you're not, then there's society looking at you like, damn, you're a failure, yet you're not. So I think that's one of the things that will change about society. You know, What about you, Jeff? Um, I think one of the main issues with society today is that everything runs off of greed. You know, um, Everyone's just kind of out to take care of themselves. You know, uh, you step on the next guy to get a leg up. And so I think that's one of the biggest issues, you know, because uh, if we all kind of 
come together and try and you know uh, what is it help each other out uh, or you know as you're trying to make money and make your living you know um, you know just uh, what is it oh, man I lost the point but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but either way long story short you know <laughs> let's stop hoarding wealth at the top 1% and let's see how we can divide it equally amongst 99 and then you know we solve a lot of the issues that you know that that are ailing us today yeah I think that's my one thing yeah, and I was going to add something similar. I was going to say corruption. I think, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of, you know, just uh, money lost within the system that can help, even going back to your point of the youth, you know, mm -hmm. that can come back to us and really help support different institutions, people, you know, marginalized or disadvantaged people within the economy and the country. And I think, yeah, if we had more proper structured, you know, systems in place that gave accountability and opportunity to people a lot would change i like that i like that and wrapping us up okay i'd <laughs> say um cancel culture to a limit because nowadays it's getting really insane people will like look for tweets that you had like 10 years ago i do believe people change and perspectives change so mm. i think it's it's toxic right now yeah oh my You've actually said something very important, but we're gonna sort of come back that into that in a bit. Um, this wraps up our icebreaker, yeah. so we can we can go. Thank you so much, Bubble Connections. <laughs> for this. Um, so we are now part two of our session, which is what we're gonna be talking about: um, create collective creative consciousness, the triple C's of today, and this is tying in with what we are doing. Um, with togetherness and I think a lot of why it was so important and all of you guys sitting right here is um, so vital towards this conversation um, and now I want you to start this off because something that you experienced over last year was collaboration deeply sharing resources and given the limitations of the pandemic have you found your how did you find yourself opening up towards um, collaborating and reaching out with other people um, I think for myself personally, I've always been a, col a collaborative person. Um, I always find when I'm working in a team and with others, the, the end output, the end product that we produce is much uh, better than if it would just be me or just more fuller and more inclusive of, of you know, different ideas, different backgrounds, different perspectives. And I think now in the last year with, uh, uh, with the COVID and everything and quarantine, it really gave us that space to really dive deeper into that collaboration and see how you know how we can really create something special and in my case it was Nairobi year two where you know I was bringing different uh, producers different artists uh, different graphic designers all together in the same space and just coming out with cool ass ideas yeah because you know going also into for you Rosemary you're a um, fashion designer yeah. baker artist <laughs> and there's ways in which do you feel um, how did you feel in that space of quarantine? You were, how are you feeling everything was coming together for you? <laughs> um, in the fashion industry, um, I didn't really even get to collaborate a lot like last year because I wouldn't even get people to model for me when COVID was COVID. <laughs> but um, a lot of creators really did share each other's work, like past work. And um, another thing that opened my mind to, during the pandemic, um, people really um, leaned to the tech side. So um, virtual reality fashion is a new thing that's coming up. So that will really um, help with slow fashion because we don't need to produce everything that's going to be on the runway. If you can digitalize it, that's amazing. So that's a new thing that I really want to look into and even bring it here. Um, yeah, mostly that. <laughs> I know, because for you, Jeff, I think this would be super interesting to like dive into. Mm -hmm. We were thinking about ways, we were thinking of like the two different collaborations and you have a space whereby yeah. it can intertwine towards like us um, having people in your space. And I want you to like dive into that, like how you've been able, especially last year, this year, towards getting yourself out um, again, um, towards opening up with other people. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, the last year was definitely a challenge because I think when the whole COVID thing started, we were actually even wrapping up last year's, you know, NDW festival. So uh, right after that, you know, it was 
it was really tricky because you know all the you know everyone who's DJing or anything like that, all of that dried up, okay. and so everyone kind of had to go back to the drawing board and figure things out. So it was really good because then I got to reach out and reconnect with a lot of people, uh, you know, who are trying to figure out okay, how do we do things virtually? How do we do things in this new way? And it was uh, it was uh, really good, and a lot of, a lot uh, came out of, uh, out of that because uh, with the space I have, what I try and do is try and connect creatives together. Mm -hmm. So it's not really just looking at myself and okay, how can I take advantage of all these people? It's more like okay, all these people are here, they they probably should meet, they probably should start talking, and then something can come out of that. So it was kind of switching over to that that uh, that you know the the whole COVID thing, the whole pandemic really helped. Be everyone kind of hit the brakes on what they were doing and then kind of sort out each other. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of good stuff came out of it. Okay. So we we've talked about like the positive. Like of course collaboration is great, but I've always wanted to know where does it where do you draw the line <clears throat> whereby you're feeling that. Um, Whoever, how you're about to approach somebody else and also for you as an artist it comes with a bit of like give and take so maybe like Anam for you you had a lot of people on your album how, where did you feel there was a bit of like okay I have to give up a bit for me to for sure and, and this is something you know my mom has always been telling me since I was young and you know too many chefs Spoil, spoil, spoil the meal. Huh? Yeah. So I think when it comes to collaboration, there also has to be a clear distinction between roles. You know, everyone can't be doing the same thing or you know trying to come up with the same concept. It's really about what are you good at, what are you specializing in. Okay, what's my role within this project? How can I contribute my part for this certain output and not really step in on anybody's toes? And I think if you create. If you can create that structure within the project or you as yourself as an individual know where you can come in and really put your expertise then uh, you wouldn't really step on toes but this is a learning process for everyone and i think i've been in that position before these guys as well and uh, yeah you just have to be with the right people who who, know, who can see where where they can fit into this certain project right yeah is that like would you say that that has been the same for you like there was a bit of a give or take um, towards like certain projects you embarked on. Like you, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a really um, fine line when it comes to professionalism and having good vibes. So um, sometimes you can find the pe people you're working with might not be as professional as you want them to be okay. on set when you're working, especially if you're friends. Um, another thing is, um, as he said, people have to get their own roles. So you can't, I can't be telling the camera guy how to do his job or the set designer how to do their job. Everyone should be like having their own roles when you're collaborating. And it's something that should be stated before you all start, you decide to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's super important. I was just, you know, I was thinking about this because caution, <laughs> oh, this one's going to kill me. In the back of your mind, there's always that <laughs> way of um, being being um, aware that everybody that you put on this project is important, but at the same time, I know there are things that at the end of it all, we'll have to give. Like there's a bit of a sweet compromise, as we like to say, um, towards like getting these projects off the road. And I don't know, I was just thinking about it because I had this, in terms of uniting several people with the aim of their strengths to be amplified. But at the end of the day, I don't know, maybe for you, Jeff, you've worked with your set a lot. Um, yeah. How do you feel you're able to ensure these, everybody's, like almost the strengths um, gather up, <laughs> you uh, must say. I guess a lot of it is, you know, kind of, it's really important to uh, build the right team from the get-go, you know, because, uh, by the time you have a project and you're thinking to yourself, okay, you know, I have five guys who would uh, make a good team to get this project done. You also have to kind of look at them individually. Like, you know, guy number two has a humongous ego. He's not going to be able to work with everyone. Then, you know, it's something you have to consider. And, and it's and it's everywhere from, you know, uh, be it like um, musical projects, uh, some more, something more professional, like, you know, like just basic production work and all of that, you know, it's just about putting the right people together, but at the same time always being able to kind of have people talk to each other and, you know, kind of in a very open and frank way because there's a lot of, in as much as, you know, guys don't step on each other's toes, uh, you know, we have a bit of a culture of not wanting to 
you know, necessarily always want to confront someone. Right. And sometimes maybe that's necessary to kind of break down, uh, you know, like someone has walls up or someone has an ego, someone kind of wants to come in and take over the project and mm. you have to kind of remind them that... Egos are yeah, playing into, are coming to play. You kind of have to kill your, in, your own ego as well, getting into something. And I mean, like for me, I've, you know, I, I work more on professional stuff, but I got mm -hmm. my start in music production. Right. And that killed a lot of collaboration in the uh, early days, you know, a lot of people wanted to collaborate, but then again, no egos were getting checked at the door. So you walk into someone's thing and he's like, yeah, this is my project, it's gonna go this way. And then the next time he, uh, you go over and he's gonna do the same thing to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, no, 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 the same way you, you know, shot me, even me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, uh, this is my project, it's my way of the highway. So yeah, I think, I think that's one of the biggest things, you know, guys have to kind of remember. Yeah. You give yourself to the process and hold the project above all else. Yeah. Above all else. Yeah. And, I, and I like that, because now I can build on to understanding whether there's been a bit of a fusion, mm -hmm. like an invisible line that holds us together and I feel like has that changed how we connect and is that like and how do we tap into this because um, given that we were so, sort of in self-isolation, where was the point of okay I can go out and, and, and subconsciously be able to connect with other people, do you feel? Maybe Rosemary, because you you are also into baking, mm. and I feel like this this is something interesting. That how do you go into okay? Where do I go to? Where is my target market? Who do I can I connect with and stuff like that? Um, see, for baking, it's more like the business side than the creative side. Mm -hmm. So, but with the creative thing, mm -hmm. during this pandemic, um, we really had to engage ourselves in the internet mm -hmm. so i discovered like new things i actually have interest in especially when people like that time everyone was sharing everyone's work everyone's doing something new like we had to do other things that we didn't used to do like because life got in the way mm -hmm. but um so yeah like through that um i was more drawn to like collaborate with other people like um illustrators or like um, people in tech, like in fashion, you know, like you were, the, the, the limits were expanded. Oh, expanded. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. they were limitless. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. We have the, in okay, that's amazing. You mm. said the internet, right? Yeah. We, sometimes you feel like it works against us as creatives because mm -hmm. we are supposed to be in our minds expanding towards like what we have in front of us but we get drawn and i want <laughs> we get drawn by so many things that almost a pressure for feeling like okay guys are doing this so i must be doing this and maybe you guys tell me because i i also feel heavily drawn by the internet at some times almost to the point of mental breaks almost yeah <laughs> so I feel like yes, there is a pressure. There's a lot of pressure, especially right now. Everyone is doing amazing stuff, from people who are even 16 to people who are older. Everyone is doing really amazing stuff, and the in internet is really powerful. But it's up to you to take it as either inspiration, because <laughs> it can get overwhelming. It, it, you can be like, what am I actually doing? If, mm -hmm. if you start, the thing is, if you start comparing artists, that's where you go downhill. Just know individualism is where it's at. Be your own self, take your time, take your time to know what you like, explore, experiment on, like the, the borders are limitless. Take your time <laughs> to know what you want, what you like, what you don't like. Yeah, don't don't be pressed. It's 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 all fun and games to say. Don't be pressurized, but the pressure is definitely there. And yeah. do you feel like this comes from self? Also, there's the, the sort of like we like to, what we like to say the imposter <laughs> syndrome kicking in. Whereby yeah. you don't. Create. I mean, I know you you created an app. We're we're gonna go back into different pots here because we have a melting pot of creativity sitting right here. But did you feel at any one point you were like, am I really capable of doing this? <laughs> For sure, there's many stages where you where you reach where you reach that where you're like, should I even be doing this album? Should I be releasing this album? Who am I? Yeah, <laughs> to, to stages where it's like, oh, this is the best album. Let's get it out here. Let's... So I think you always go up this roller coaster of emotions and yeah. you know just feelings. But I think, especially going back to the internet and feeling this pressure, it's more about having this balance. You have mm. to have a balance of your life, having a balance whether you're looking at it, okay on the internet in reality mm. you know yes i'm feeling bad about myself or i'm not confident but other times i am and i think just 
taking those in and reflecting from them is what can make you, in the general sense now, produce something that that will matter and that you can really Look strive. back on and yeah. be happy that, yeah, I put yeah. that best work out there. Exactly. Yeah, you work with, you said, professional corporate work. Has that ever sort of, have you ever felt that? Like, you're just on set and like, who am I? <laughs> Every, I mean, like almost every time, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, I think it's just one of those things of, you know, you want to make something that's really good, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and it's it's just all about growth. But actually, I think he really hit the nail on the head. You know, it really comes from these feelings of uh, self doubt, self confidence. So whenever you see uh, someone else doing something really, really amazing on the internet and, and putting out something really good, you know, your first thought is when you feel bad, it's like, oh man. Am I actually that good? You know, or uh, you know, or am I actually capable of that? Then the imposter syndrome kicks in, and you know, it leads to a lot of hating on the internet and stuff like yeah. that. And, yeah. And uh, I think, but then again, it's good because when you see the level people are at, yeah. and it drives you to do better too. For yourself, think about, mostly. Yeah, because it, it's about you. This is not about them. It's not about how other people are going to take it. It's about you and your journey. Yeah. So, and it's your chance to grow. So when you feel bad. You know, double down. Spend more time in the studio if that's your place. Spend more time in front of the mirror if you do makeup, you know, in the kitchen, if you bake, all of that, you know, and just kind of lose yourself in the process. So by the time putting something out and you're proud of it, yeah. then that's, I think that's a, that's the best thing. I think that's the best way to find that. I love that. Oh yeah. my God. Because at the end of the day, okay, this thing will continuously, it will continuously be in a battle with ourselves, but continuously be in a unfortunate unhealthy relationship or healthy relationship with the internet because it's here to stay we are going so digital yeah. with everything but i was i, I want to wrap this up by something that's super important that i feel has been sort of arcing us as free minds but also just as a society as a whole in the creative space collectives right you guys know them we've had the nest we have this i i think it's like we know in a collective we are working towards a common goal right but how do you feel you, you as an individual, hypothetically, would contribute to such a space and still have your own individual, individual, <laughs> your own individual mindset. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just want to maybe get your thoughts on this, like in terms of like working in a collective and and also just um, how you stay, like you said. I think collectives are a great way to um, grow because yeah. you all just grow together. Growing as a community is pretty much not easier, but it's kind of better because you have people to push you, to motivate you, to you have the same common goals. The but together. yeah, you have the togetherness exactly. <laughs> Even if one of you feels bad or the imposter syndrome is kicking in, like there's someone who's going to be there to help you. Um, but as much as um, the collectives are great, um, individualism is also pretty good. You're supposed to have your own goals, like me as well, maybe what do I want to achieve for myself? What impact will I have in the fashion industry? What impact do I want to have by the time I'm this age? Or what? What do I want, you know, as much as we are a group of people with the same common goal, I need to know what do I want for myself and for the better of others. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do you feel like the, it takes, um, there's a bit of a higher power in a collective? Like say, I don't know. <laughs> like a hierarchy? Like, a, like this, you know how like, yes, as creatives we are here, but there's almost an invisible power of like, but we are a collective. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. For me, when I look at collectives, I think it's more about the roles that you can't do. I think a collective comes in and let's say, you know, we could say we are a collective. Now, I know he has a studio, so if I ever need a studio, I'm there, you know. If he has a party and he needs a DJ or he needs someone to sound engineer, I can be there. And I, it kind of re- now relieves those pressures that we put on ourselves of, trying to do everything as an individual. Yeah. I think yeah, being an individual and standing out is still important and it still has to be there. But yeah, end of the day, you can't do everything by yourself. Yeah. So really having this collective and having the people there to be supportive and just being able to provide and offer you other aspects that can make your individual contribution bigger, you know, that's really the end goal. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'm so glad. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, and um, yes, I think. 
thank you so much for everybody that tuned in. I just want to thank our amazing catalyst, Anam, Rosemary, and Jeff, to Nairobi Design Week, Orion Studios, and finally, Verbal Connections. As always, thank you so much. Stay free minded. Wow. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we are so, so grateful for those who are able to come and, you know, join us into the, the live chat. Um, like we said, we are going deep. This is now the post session uh, whereby we can gather like your questions. And I have, you know, a few guests with me <laughs> on the live stream as well. So I think I'm going to start off just by um, figuring out, you know, a lot, a lot of you guys um, had a lot of like a lot of questions in regards to you know, collaboration and how that is changing over the over the course of, you know, the years and everything. But something that I do want us to sort of dive deep today is understanding also just us as individuals and whether creativity is an individual thing and how that trans, you know, continues to transform towards now collaboration. So I think um, I will call upon <laughs> my fellow partner Lindsay and maybe we'll be able to like dig deep into understanding that and whether her experiences with creativity has been on an individual standpoint and how it transpires um towards you know other people and collaborations um Thank you everyone for coming, first of all. If you enjoyed uh, our session um, earlier on, then I would say just in, in the comment section, just put like, like a woo, you know, this, this, this emoji, this, ah. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Is it, is it like a double high five or is it like a, like a praise and worship? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, of course, as, as um, if you're joining us now, we do have some other people on the screen that you did not see previously uh, in the chat. Um, of course, as soon as, as, as I'm done answering um, the question that Nyashomba has, has uh, probes towards me, I think we'll definitely go around and each person can tell you, can tell you a little bit about who they are and, and what they do. Um, my name is Lindsay Obath. For those of you who didn't catch my name in the beginning, you can call me Abyss. I am also a painter. So for me, uh, Creativity as, as it is, um, it's, it stems from very many different places. And I would say considering the craft that, um, that I do practice, which is uh, painting more specifically body art that, um, that I'm known for, it's, it's, it heavily revolves around bringing a lot of talents uh, together. It's, it's a very uh, interest, interesting space when it comes to the um, vision boarding and getting the ideas together because when you when you really when we're talking about uh, collective creative consciousness um, you really have to ask yourself why you're getting into the certain group or the certain setting that you're getting into and what you want out of it and I think as as um, as a fellow creative it's one of the things that you have to keep going back to your why um, determines everything um, if you keep going back to your why, you, you can either um, re-motivate everyone else within the group as well as yourself. Because once you combine too many forces, which happens a lot of the times when we, when we, when we try to collaborate, um, the ego gets in the way and everyone's, I, everyone's, I'd say, for lack of a better word, what everyone wants to get out of it ends up being at the forefront, you know. As, as, a, as a creative and you collaborate, you, you're always thinking, how, how best am I going to do my best work um, in this setting? And you have to keep remembering that, you know, when you, when you bring forces together, the sweet spot is how do you fulfill yourself, but at the same time, help others also elevate to that level. And I guess when you, when you get back to it, you have to keep going back to, I'm here for a reason, and my skills and everything that I can bring to the table is is what's going to push this forward and everyone else around you 
is also in that same space. So it's pretty much checking, checking each other for, for um, pretty much pushing forward what's, what they came to do and reminding them why they're here and doing what they came there to do, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm gonna open the floor up. Um, I think maybe Jai, Lucy, um, of course, um, for those of you who don't know them, they'll, they'll introduce themselves, but I'll actually hand back over to Nyashomba uh, to, to keep uh, the conversation flowing. Thank you so much. Yes, as you know, we have some amazing panelists today with us um, who I would like to start us off with introducing themselves and letting the people know what they do and who they are about, you know, and then we can now take it from there. So I think ladies first, we'll start with Lucy, um, take us away. <laughs> so, hi. My name is Lucy Robbie, also Robbie Nine. A lot of people know me as Robbie Nine. Um, I'm a fashion stylist and I've been doing this for maybe the past, I think I can say like 10 years now. And it's been such a journey. So actually I really loved your, um, your intro, Lindsay, like I was just, I was just here like nodding. I was just like, yeah, really resonating with everything that you were saying. And well, it has brought me here, even like me, my being in this particular session today, it was just like, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, Marlene, and I was just asking her what kind of spaces are there? I hadn't really, and then she introduced me to two mind sessions. And then I think I sent an invite I asked for an invite to this particular session today and I ended up being a speaker. So um, I really, I really love, and then the idea was collective consciousness. So it's just really amazing to see where, how I ended up to this particular session and all, all of these things that I've, I've done that I've kind of dove. So I'm just, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So I might be listening more than actually talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, it's always, it's always interesting when people begin like that and then the, the pills, the, the pill starts to, to unravel yeah. as you deep, you know, because then yeah. you start to see yourself in others. And that's what we are hoping to aim by this, but thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Yes. All right. Um, next up is our newest member, Simon. Can I call you Simon? Simon is um has never probably never attended a free minds, but is also new here. So take us away. Hey. <laughs> hey, thank you for introducing me. Simon is super super okay. Everyone in Nairobi call me Simon because it's like more easy and yeah. Uh, I'm so happy to to join uh, this group because uh, yeah I I feel a bit I'm arriving in Nairobi like in August uh, but I still feel a bit alone in, in work in uh, let's see let's say like a designer not like friends I have a lot of friends but like a designer I'm trying to create my network no other designer other creative in Nairobi so I'm so happy to be here uh, so just to introduce a bit myself I'm a product designer my name is Simone Cacciotella. Uh, I'm from Italy, and uh, I come to I've come to Nairobi because um, because uh, I want to do my part, positive part for the world. So I decided to yeah to go somewhere where where we can do something and not just design garbage to put uh, just to follow capitalism. So I come to Nairobi. I find my job with Bar Manufacturing. I don't know someone probably know Gcocoa. They make this charcoal stove, uh, they are quite famous in Nairobi. But uh, my big dream is to work with artisan because I think that the power of Africa, the power of Kenya is in artisan. Like uh, it's, really, it's really the way of produce that we have here. And uh, I mean, after you have to tell me, I wanna, I wanna learn, but uh, I feel that I don't want that uh, Kenya become the new China where, okay, there is a super fast development, but uh, but losing the soul. I wanted to keep the way of 
producing by hand. In, in Europe, I, I really said because we lose our ability of producing, of modifying, of doing, and everyone just buy, go to IKEA and buy the already made furniture and they no, even don't know how to change a bulb. So yeah, okay, I, I don't know how, how long time I, go. I have, I wanna also hear other people. If someone have more question about me, about what I want to do, and etc., yeah, is uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing! Thank you. I love that. I, I think I think we will continue to bounce off because product design and all these integrate so immensely. So I'm sure we will be able to like dig deep soon um, on that. But thank you so much um, for that. Um, next, last but not least, we have Jai, um, who will, yes, hello, hello. take us through. Can you through. guys hear me okay? Can yes, you hear me? we oh, can. Awesome. So my name is Jai. First off, thank you to Free Mind Session and Arobi Design Week for having me. I am a musician, lawyer, writer, producer. I do a lot and basically anything within the creative sphere. I've touched on a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to have this discussion uh, with everybody else on the panel and um, really looking forward to having a interesting discussion. Thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> this is also something that I, I find so interesting is that somebody is a, is, a, is a musician, has this creative role and still in the corporate, you know, as a leg in the corporate. So you are the best of both worlds. <laughs> Jack of all right trades. here sitting with us. Actually, yeah, Jack of all trades. Jai of all trades. Let's do that one. That sounds better. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Thank you so much. And finally, we have um, who is somebody who was a new member, who was a, a member of Free Minds, but came back and we're so happy to have her. Um, Imelda, who is on the call as well. Uh, Imelda, please uh, introduce yourself a little bit and then we'll go into it. Actually, sorry, before Imelda comes on, I actually have to give her credit because she is the one who actually brought light towards ha us having this conversation um, during our brainstorms. And this is the reason why we are actually here today to speak on this. So Imelda. Thanks, Jonas. Um, hi, I'm Imelda. Natasha Kondo, I am a writer, um, I am a photographer and a digital artist. Um, my art side kind of goes under the name Adikini. Um, yeah, I was part of Free Mind Sessions a few years ago as they were beginning and now I took a hiatus or a sabbatical if you can call it that, and now I'm back. Uh, when it comes to collective creative consciousness, I guess, um, what I'd like for us to kind of like dive into and what I see coming from this conversation is just a lot about creativity and being part of something and um, the mind of what the mind of a creative and how we connect with each other on that level. Um, so yeah, it's good to be here. And thank you to Free Mind Sessions and Nairobi Design Week. <laughs> thank you guys. Ah, amazing. I'm so happy we were able to get to know another, one another, I think this is going to be exciting. One of the things um, that, is so, that I've seen is uh, like what I like to say, the common thread that is joining us is obviously um, design, which is obviously creativity, but I wanted us to double, to dial down a bit and figure out whether how, how this all stems, like how does it all begin? Um, because we are aware that we have our surroundings, we are aware we have what it is we aspire or imagine or we want to create. But I would like us individually to come to understand what, almost where is the, the, the starting point. Um, maybe I can begin by saying the way in which my process is, is you know, in terms of um, whether it, it, it's consuming a lot of the content um, towards fashion and, you know, being able to sort of like in weeks or months in hand of researching and figuring out, okay, you know, the, the consuming of this content, how do I want it to take? And it's almost just kind of like sitting in a pool of water and sort of allowing the, 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 
the, the information to seep through you and almost like I like to say the eureka moment of <laughs> wow now I can start to either doodle or sketch and and then I start to think okay before I even think that I'm wanting to like have anybody on the project it's more so about me and does that you know you know maybe um, you can answer this for me and figure out like does that make me so individualistic does that um, block me from you know exploring more options or does that is that also part of the processes that maybe as creatives we've never talked about that us being in our sort of cocoon or things like that um is what actually breeds um the best of us so i don't know um <laughs> i think uh we can sort of just you know go around and ex explain sort of like the individual process and and then just you know take it from there um yeah Whoever is, I'm opening the floor to anybody, maybe the last person, Imelda, I don't know how you are, our data collector, you are also, you know, part of having to seek yourself a lot into the creative process. Maybe you can walk us through that. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to creativity, I believe that the, the little spark that begins comes from an individual. Um, little ideas, um, little sounds, you know, like a sp like speaking as a, let's say photographer and digital artist or writer, I think something comes up like a sound, how an image would like to look or something that somebody said. And then from there, the idea is born and then it grows. And as a data collector now, um, it doesn't really require as much creativity as such, but it does require a lot of um, innovation to try and get the data out of the data that you want that would be useful out of people. So I don't think like once the process has begun as an individual thing, it can continue to go individually. Um, the artist, the person can decide to go with the idea to its end as an individual project or bring others into it, which is now also just bringing other individual ideas into one idea. So um, what happened is that it, it um, the individual idea is no longer an individual, it just becomes a bunch of ideas put together. Right. And you know, this is super important because, uh, like I said, every, every body's um, process is so different and we we seem to sort of think that there's a linear <laughs> a linear way of um creativity um i think it, it either morphs with with each project that we take on and i'm just curious to figure out whether we can be able to create a manual for this because most of the time you know people are asked the question of how do you compute um, your ideas or how do you come to a certain conclusion, for example, or how, how are you able to come up with this? And um, I would like to also like figure out whether we can break the cycle of putting it in a silo or putting it in a box and whereby we, we can figure out that there is different ways to approach things. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's, you know, you've highlighted something super important, um, Imelda, on that point uh, towards that. So moving, maybe, I don't know, um, is there, Jai, as a, as, a, as a musician as well, okay, we, we've kind of talked on like the art side, this is maybe moving towards music and what your experience has been like that uh, as an individual working on stuff. Maybe take us. On um, the way I see it is that um, art and creativity are extremely subjective subjects, meaning my creative process will be very different from yours. For instance, um, I play in a punk band called Crystal Axis, and I think you guys know a couple of my band members like Fox and Ahmed. So despite the fact that we play within the same band, make the same music, play the same shows, we have very different creative processes, and the way we go about composing and writing music is entirely, it's subjective. So at some point, you have to accept that you all point of view is not going to be the same as the next person's point of view, which in my view is the beauty of life. You know, if we're all the same, then 
there genuinely would be no art, there'd be no music, you know, there would be no creativity in general. So I think the subjective nature of it is what makes art and collaborations pretty awesome because then you have different people with different perspectives coming in, sharing their views, um, their perspective, taking it in a completely different direction. For instance, last year I was working on a project with a close friend and um, <clears throat> we had a label who was interested in mastering the project. Uh, so we sent them everything, stems and all that. The final product we got back in the end was quite different from what we had started out with. So it took a while to come to terms with that. But then again, you also have to take into account these industries and um, the kind of landscape and the world that we're in. This is sort of how things work. Whatever you see as the final product, whether it's a song or an album, chair, whatever, it's definitely not what it was at the beginning, which is fine. That's you know part of um, the creativity process and all that. So despite it being subjective, at some point, you also have to learn to sort of let go and trust in the others that you're working in, which is what makes it important to work with like-minded individuals when you're part of a collaborative collaboration or collective coalition or anything of that sort. So it's yes. more or less, yeah. Okay. Um, I, so I would like to call upon uh, Lucy to like, as a fashion, on a perspective as a fashion stylist and your, your process from, yeah, your process, especially and identifying your style as well um, towards that. Okay. So I can, I can only speak to my perspective, but I really resonated with what Jai said. And what I can add to that is that how, I, how, how my process was when I first started in the industry is not the same process that I have like right now with how I try and create things. So 10 years of like, so time also has, has a really big part in playing. So time and also experience, it has a lot to play with. Um, so as soon as from, I can, I can literally see, um, like, let's say in my, my social, my social media pictures, um, somebody asked me why I don't delete anything. And for me, I, I told them that the beauty in my timeline is I can actually see exactly where I started from and to where I am, to where I am in that particular point. And you can actually see this this growth that 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 happened in in my timeline, and it's beautiful to see that because I can explain to you what my process is right now because of all these compounded experiences that I've had over the years, so that I can actually really refine and make a better product every single time or the next and the unlearning and the learning of it is that it's it's a process and you you have to like fail and fall like a lot of times before you can be able yeah. to actually um get everything really really like really really right and yeah. right just for you first yeah. so like for me my process now is because I haven't really been creating like a lot in a while for a long time, but because of my experiences I had from Eve, I really refined how it is that I want to, like from vision boarding to picking the people that I want to work with, picking them, maybe the models that um, I would like to selecting the the designers that I can approach for for what and, and who to talk to and how I can get um, things. So it's 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 refined, but I I always see and maybe this is just a sense of us like um, trying to make ourselves better. I'm always like, okay, when I look back at even when I look back at my work, I'm like, hmm, I, I could have done this. I should have maybe if I did this. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. Okay, um, that's, that's, I mean, wow, because, you know, 
that this is amazing to hear this because I think most of us assume that um, we are always as creatives just in the bubble of creating. <laughs> so <laughs> if we do, there is moments where there's blank, uh, there's uh, blankness and everything, but we do understand that is also the process. Um, one thing I would do feel like that you brought solely towards gearing to uh, how people in this time, especially, you know, we've said our process as an individual, but there's a process of also how do we connect, you know, COVID is still with us. Um, and uh, we have been experiencing as creatives at, at, at distance and, and how that has also been affecting us. You know, I want us to also dig deep on figuring how that has, you know, kind of crippled our creativity and how, you know, you know, each of us, our experiences has been has been sort of tainted with COVID because we were such in us, we were in such a vibrant space of moving, shaking, and things like that. So maybe I don't know, Lucy, like you you've you you're in the fashion space. So I wanted maybe to like juggle you on this and how you've experienced this, especially last year and and, and this year as well. Um, as to, that's a really good question. Um, as to last year, a lot of things, a lot of things happened. Um, so I was in, I used to do a fashion spread every week um, right. at, at E-Woman. And, and the thing with that is that as soon as COVID happened, guess what happened? You can't shoot anymore. Like it's, yeah, you, it's can't, done. you can't meet these people. It's not possible. You can't shoot. You can't meet. And then you, you remember in that, in that time space that you were in, um, like you couldn't even meet somebody or like the, the anxiety, the tenseness, and it was like a war zone. Like it was so empty. But like, and then I think in, in a way, it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. I think, I think I did need to slow down. And so it really made me like really go back to where I started like 10 years ago, over 10, 12 years ago. So, so Eve, Eve gone. Um, so I had to start using pictures from, so I had, I had like a whole like uh, collection of pictures that I had done for the past maybe like four years. So I had to recycle those pictures and come up with a new story or try and come up with, with new ways of, of, of looking at things. And it got exhausting. It was so exhausting. Like um, it was, it was because it it really takes a toll on you as a creative. First of all, there's this whole thing, and you really don't know what what is going on. And then, secondly, um, you're not really assured of what's going to happen next. And then, whatever you had been doing just stops. Like completely like this there's a new normal so figuring that out was really kind of hard but the slowing down of things really made me really really go back to go back to 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 really understanding why I chose styling for myself like why like what is it that I want to say because I, I felt like I had been saying a lot of things for a lot of people, but what is it that I wanted to say? What was the what was the what was the core goal for doing something that I loved completely? Like what was it? So asking yeah. the why the why questions has been very a very interesting. So this year I have been even with the collaborations that I'm currently taking on and I'm very, I'm, I've become much more, even much more intentional 
with even the, what I want to say and how I want to curate and what it is that I want to dabble in. So in a, in a sense, I'm kind of grateful for that. Yeah, okay. Well, that's important. I, I, I wanna uh, hand it to, to hear a different perspective from now Simon, who is a product designer. How is this, um, you know, we have this, this, this COVID and what we're experiencing right now in distance um, affected you as an individual and the work that you have been producing? Okay, uh, this is a good question. <laughs> I can give you the simple answer that uh, basically I, I was working in China until December 19. I come back to Italy and basically I was supposed to, to come to, <laughs> I was supposed to come to Nairobi in March and after COVID happened, and so I've been uh, without work uh, until basically August uh -huh. because, uh, because uh, yeah, the company that hired me in Nairobi was say, yeah, you can come, but there is no plane. <laughs> and so, no, uh, after, uh, this is a simple answer. After we, they, they start to manage. And so basically I, I start to collaborate with them since July. So we set up teams, we set up calls, and uh, my boss was super helpful to, to teach me even from, from far uh, to, yeah. But it's still, uh, it's still different. It's different because when you meet on, uh, online, there is some, every time this kind of little problem of connection, you're not directly, I'm Italian, I speak by hand. And so sometimes it's different. It's different to meet people, to create network, uh, to... Uh, so yeah, you, you can uh, give the information, the technical information. You can, uh, you can, you can work even online uh, setting. Uh, it's amazing that all the instruments that have been created in this year to, to work uh, even online, that is full of company. I think like idea.org is still probably working online until September. So I, it's crazy that a company big like this is like, don't, uh, uh, don't need some time because uh, sometimes you need to be in the office and you need to this informal, uh, this informal speaking that you don't have. If, if you have a meeting, you do have to do this, this and this. But if you meet, there is, there is more behind. There is, uh, there is a, a soups contents that give, they give, they give a, more meat, more, more energy to your project. So yeah. sometimes it's really, I really feel that the, the most important of the project happened uh, in the moment where the, we, we was not working, we was just together eating lunch. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, good that there is a lot of mean to communicate because mm. it, it was possible to start work with my company without seeing no one since July, I, I do an excellent job, but uh, when you meet, uh, it's, it's different. They would like to be there with you and really <laughs> just, I don't I'm know. Really I, yeah. we, we, it, we are still having to do everything virtual like we are doing right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, it's when you meet someone directly, you remember more the person, you have more connection, you... Yeah, is uh, is not behind a screen, so uh, and maybe you drink a coffee or there is a, a break and you say you go to reach that one people that is really capture your attention or yeah or just even not just <laughs> okay all right thank you so much no I think we are getting in an influx of um, some questions here and I want to hand over to Lindsay to answer um, very important questions just jumping still on the same line of just um, how COVID has sort of um, impacted our, our creativity, but also how that is, you know, continuously the stay at home narrative and things like that. Lindsay, maybe you can um, take us away on, on the second question asked um, by our people online. Um, I don't do know if I think... can be heard. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yes, we can. Do you think social yeah, distancing and what? My, my, yeah, my mic was on this whole time and I was just thinking <laughs> to myself, my goodness, if I was passing any wind, uh, it, would, it would be a wrap. <laughs> it's just hit me, oh my goodness. Um, 
so uh, for about working in COVID, I think that's that's definitely uh, something that I think we've all struggled with, and especially my craft. Um, I'm a body painter. It's probably the most intimate thing that you can do. I have to touch you. I have to talk to you like this. So it's it's. Um, I took a big hit. Um, I was crippled for months. Um, even up to now, you know, it's not something that I do as, as often as before because also my craft thrives like as we were talking, as we're talking about collaboration, you know, I, what, what my work entails is 1000% a collaborative effort. You know, I need, I need the person to paint. I need the venue to paint the person. I need um, the photographer to come take the pictures of, of the person that I'm painting. So it, it requires a lot. And I feel like on the, on the topic of collective creative consciousness, um, collectively as creatives, our conscious had to change all of us throughout COVID. All of we were forced into it. It was uncomfortable. It was, it was depressing. Um, and we, we, we all kind of were forced into a, into a space where we had to figure it out. You know, someone like, like, like Lucy, who she's easily someone I could have worked with last year, very easily, but, but that wasn't, <laughs> but that was taken away from us. So with lockdown and social distancing, um, unfortunately, we've been put into a space where the part where we complain about it, that part is over. <laughs> that part is over. I was, I was reading a quote uh, today. There's this amazing photographer called Kabuda Kago. I don't know if any of you guys have, have heard of him. Uh, fantastic, fantastic photographer. And he also has a very black and white uh, view of seeing things and he was and he was talking about how as creatives and as Jai said before our work is so subjective um uh, sorry it's yeah it's, it's it's so subjective so as you collaborate with other people and you're trying to secure certain bags especially within the corporate world etc cetera, etc cetera, you have to take some of those feelings away from your work um, the same way even throughout COVID you have to take some of those personal feelings away and just realize the money must be made. And I hate to bring it up, but you know, we're, 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 trying, we're trying to eat, we're trying to, to sustain lifestyles, you know? And COVID has been very, very difficult um, and forcing us to, to kind of re reimagine what that looks like. So Kabuda said in one of his posts that you must remember that at the end of the day, it's about the products. No one cares about your, your feelings, no one cares about, oh, this guy pissed you off here and there. And your product is directly connected to you, you know? If you're already in a space where you, you feel like um, not everything is working out, so you're in a very um, self, uh, hopeless space and you're having a pity party all for yourself, then of course the effects of COVID are going to hit you 10 times more, you know? Of course you're going to feel like you're, you're stuck in a space. But you, we have no option but to reimagine things. You know, how do I, as a body painter, I think even the question for me, I had to ask myself, how do I create this experience, um, I guess, virtually or without putting myself and others at risk? And to be honest, I still have not found that answer. So you look at everything else you can do. It's unfortunate that this is the world that we live in. I think as a creative, one, one superpower that we have is there is no creative I know that just does one creative thing. Um, and, 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 I, and I don't know if, if, that's, if that's just me, but I feel like um, we all have some small, small superpowers that we've either abandoned in the past or we have, we have not been, been feeding. And this, this is the time, at least on a personal level for me, that I was able to do that. You know, I, I picked up the paintbrush and instead of painting people, I went to the paper, I went to the canvas. And did I, I mean, is, is my artwork doing amazingly? No, but like anything else, you know, you need to, <laughs> I mean, guys, we have to be honest. <laughs> I no, think I like, yeah, we have to be honest. I mean, I think it's going great because 
I'm getting my own personal fulfillment. I think once you detach uh, everything else that surrounds the work and you focus on just the work, you, you will get the clients that you need. You will get the, the, the community around you. Um, uh, a very strange fact, last year I sold a painting only because a client discovered it via a hashtag. And, mm. and that for me was something very, very, very profound. And it, it almost kind of lit a fire inside me that made me realize, okay, this physical thing is not working. Um, the events that I used to make money at every weekend are not there. Am I going months without making money? Absolutely. Um, I'm also very fortunate to have um, the comfort of several people around me. Support groups are also um, very um, vital in this, in this space. You know, once you, once you get out of the, the mentality of thinking you can do it all on your own, that's when you open up other doors subconsciously. As, as, as I said, we're talking about the collective creative consciousness. Um, open up your creativity towards other people. In the 27 minutes um, pre-recorded session, uh, we're talking about how being in COVID forces you to, to collaborate with people you had never thought about collaborating mm -hmm. before. Um, embrace that space. This discomfort that we're all feeling, we can complain about it and that complaining is going to take us nowhere. Um, <laughs> The, the new space and enjoy it. I feel like I don't know if my if if my internet has done a has done a number, but <laughs> um, that's pretty much uh, okay. <laughs> Before I ramble on a bit more, uh, but pretty much embrace those uncomfortable spaces and literally put yourself there. That person you want to collaborate with just push yourself into that space. Because as creatives, we're all going through it. This is a time of solutions. Um, and I would say the more honest and open you are about where you currently are, um, it allows you to connect more with the different creatives that you need to, to collaborate with to get that product that you want. So fire away and just, you know, that fire, just keep going bits. You'll make a very nice meal with that fire. I promise you. <laughs> That is so, I love this because, I love that because it has always been, uh, you know, a turnover, like almost COVID kind of showed us there's more to us than just what people have been seeing you online, whether you've been the body artist, whether I've been the fashion designer, whether you're the product art, uh, designer, all these things, um, you know, have been sort of the perception we've decided for people to see us online, but Behold, somebody did say um, something very important, actually asked something very important in our comments is whereby, how do we still identify, how do we still remain with our, our identity within these spaces of collaboration? And I think in many ways, uh, we are, I hope, I hope I'm still online. <laughs> I'm seeing as if, Oh. Yeah. 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 You're, you're fine. Right. You're fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, froze okay. <laughs> you froze for a bit. I didn't know whether I was just talking to myself for a minute there, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Anyway, I was saying the the art of still being able. Um, Lindsay has really put up put a really how do you say almost like the ending towards what she was saying was, uh, almost jumping into what I wanted to somebody had asked in regards to how do we still remain ourselves and still be able to allow our strengths to shine with this um, while still doing collaboration. And, and I don't know how maybe each of you guys, your experiences has been with it um, in regards to even just realizing your strengths and your weaknesses be beforehand and also just identifying whereby you could also pick up um you know pick up your your weight in 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 these spaces um jai you um you are in a band you are in you are running a a, a collective 
how has that been <laughs> in in regards to yeah, yeah <coughs> in your collective um, okay. alive but as well as you know where um, you stand three, for sorry yeah finish yeah okay Dev, all right take it so up. for <laughs> all right so for a majority of my life i have been within some sort of collaborative coalition or something of that sort um the band for instance we started this way back when we were in high school i think it's been 12 13 years now that we've been playing as crystal access um as soon as we realized the pandemic was taking place and that we would not be able to go and actually play live gigs we really had to reevaluate how we were doing everything so this sort of led to us um moving towards what we now have as a Kasia collective, which is basically like a collective of different artists, creators from different sectors coming together. Um, so we all have very, very varying backgrounds, um, that different interests, and we all have different goals and priorities and all that. But the main thing and what I would say has allowed us to actually work as a band, as a collective, as a group is the fact that we are, <clears throat> we are ready and we're willing to collaborate. If you go in with, oh, this is my point of view, this is how I want the project to come out, then you will not get anywhere. Um, every time I have a conversation like this with a new musician or someone I'm producing for, I will always tell them to focus on the product and not to, no, sorry, focus on the process and not focus on the end goal. Otherwise then you're just, yeah, focus on the process. Um, that is the process of collaboration whether it's how you guys start a song, how you're writing the lyrics, whether it's how you started a painting and then someone else is going to add on to it, just continually focus on the process and surround yourself with people who have your best interests in heart. You guys have to have the same outlook to an extent and you have to have the same end goals <clears throat> to an extent. Yeah, you have to be working towards at least something similar to an extent, but you also have to be open to deviating and to shifting those goals and to allow things to change. You have to adapt to the situation. Like us, for instance, as Crystal Axis, um, live gigs was a big, big part of our income. So despite being a producer, a lawyer and all that, uh, live gigs was actually my biggest income stream. Um, obviously 2020 got rid of all of that. So we had to reevaluate, restructure and figure out what we we're going to do which in turn birthed the Acacia Collective where we were able to now figure things out slowly poly poly together and as a team as a collective and as a group of like-minded individuals who had the resources we wanted to share and um, basically also help other people out so that's the thing um, just be open to collaboration regardless of whether or not there's social distancing or covid or not these there's always ways around this thing if you want to create you will create it doesn't matter it's it's 2021 and you have to take into account we are in the digital age, the same way you guys say during the um, pre-recorded process. Uh, I mean, pre-recorded video. We are in the yeah. digital age, everything is online, everything is out there. So if you want to create, you will create. True. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jai. I hope that was helpful towards, you know, the people, you know, there are a lot of people asking questions online and we're just hoping to like, you know, identify and tap into those into those questions and, and hopefully shed some light and cre come up with solutions. So I, I, I see there's also one, uh, there's another question that's coming in that which seems very um, interesting here. Sometimes looking for solutions, even when you've identified the problem becomes challenging. How does one go about this? Um, I don't know, we, we seem, I think, as a designer, I think we're always going through uh, different problems that we have to identify. Maybe somebody can uh, maybe jump in and tell us what they would, uh, how they would answer this question, perhaps. <laughs> Lucy, I see you looking at me. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> um, how does how, how do you feel like this applies to you? Oh, this it's it's such a it's such a broad like question, but I I see it like um sometimes looking for solutions. Yes, um, I think I think answers come in very <laughs> in very 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 weird ways, and sometimes you have to learn how to look for the 
to, to actually look for the answer yourself, like to look for the answers, to look out for the signs that will give you the, the solution. Um, for me personally, um, I also am a cocoon person. Like I'm always in my own head and I'm always trying to, even when I have a concept, it has to kind of like build itself in, it, in my mind. Exactly. It has to build itself. And it sometimes it can, it depends with whatever it is I'm hatching. And it could be from a day to even like months to even like years. But then sometimes maybe when the solution comes, it's like it's actually coming at the perfect moment for you to actually be able to solve the problem that you have. So that's what I can actually say to that. Okay. Well, I am, um, you know, we like we've identified the, the beauty of all these things that we experience is mainly the process is not actually the end game as much as we do flourish in getting um, the end result. Um, as a fashion designer, I think, you know, service, my, the way I, I am to service to people is you make clothes, people need clothes, people wear clothes, right? But sometimes it's, I, I don't know, I enjoy, like I was saying earlier was that, um, I don't know, I enjoy just the, the thoughts of, oh, we could create this and we could do that and we could add such flamboyant um, things to things and, and, and add more drama to everything. Um, <laughs> but sometimes to get there and to see that product sometimes could is, is also what I, I have experienced in the past stuff because when, for example, you're not getting um, your say fab the type of fabric that you want or the type of um, sort of you know things that like little bit of intricate details that will actually push the final product towards it, it sometimes uh you know <laughs> can be that it can be a bit detrimental towards the whole process and you feel like you'd rather have just stayed in a bit of limbo for example uh yeah, I don't know if we've I, answered it correctly. Would somebody like to jump in I, and maybe? <laughs> I want to I, I jump. I, I want to jump because uh, I think that is. Uh, I have to think two minutes to the question, but now I think I would. I, I would like to say something. And yeah, yeah. Uh, li li like creative, we are the only one. Sometimes there is a problem, and uh, apparently there is no solution. We say. Uh, really, there is, there is a problem. You say if you think rationally, there is no solution. But like creative, we can uh, we can go around. We is, this is the the beauty of our job. It's like uh, it's amazing. Like if maybe there is a problem and you cannot solve it, just make it bigger. Like um, oh, let me find an example. But uh, like uh, sometimes we design something and there is an engineering problem that makes like not beautiful this particular so the, you have to like maybe you have to put a screw there and uh, and it's say uh, why this surface is so clean i don't want to put a screw in that point and the, the solution is just making a red big screw that tell to the customer this is the screw this is the way the way that the object work so sometimes you you there is no uh, rational solution, and the only way is just to go creative and say, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I uh, if I if I if I am be clear. <laughs> I mean, we are we are supposed to be problem solvers, but what if what it begs the question whether some things are meant to be solved or just left in a sort of like I said like you just kind of sit in the idea of ideas. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I want Lindsay to answer this because also she has probably a different take on this. Um, you know, I think, like, you know what's funny? My take actually yeah. isn't different. Is that different? <laughs> <laughs> it actually isn't different. I was going to say, unfortunately as creatives, we have the burden to of the world. We carry the burden of the world to be the problem solvers. Um, that 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 is that that is our job. Uh, I think the core of creativity is is to is to um, and design, especially when you look at design, um, 
is 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 to create solutions. Um, you look at things like um, there was a petition I saw the other day for creating more accessible spaces for the disabled within our country because it's not something that is there. You know, design plays a huge role into that. You know, I. I, I am a failed architect as well, you know? So, and, and, and one thing I learned, I learned it in school when I was studying architecture is that unfortunately as an architect, um, you're tasked with, with, the, with the idea of, of almost playing God. Because as an architect, you get to design how people experience space subconsciously. So, so even in, in that space, you're creating solutions. You know, if you want people to experience a certain space differently, you design it so that it, 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 it does that thing. It creates that solution to that thing. Um, the process of, of creating the solution will always just be a process. Even when you've come up with, 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 with the, the solution, um, designs change and different problems arise and even that design will need to be um, amended to to, uh, to to cater to to this new need that is there so I think as to answer that question as a if I haven't already um, <laughs> I think, I think um, to, to 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 come to 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 a space and and have an issue arise, uh, and have a situation where you feel you're not in control of. Creating solutions is the hardest part, but that's where we shine. Um, if you look at it as, as a barrier, that's all it will be. If you look at it as an opportunity, then you have something to work with. Um, and, and I feel like it's, it's, it's more a mindset thing than it is about um, practicality. You can come up with the craziest solutions, but as long as all they are are just ideas, you know, and that's all that they'll be. Um, push yourself out there to, to be in the middle of the chaos and you, you'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody who also is in this space, like um, maybe in terms of who has also cre who has found a way in free, I'll take free mind sessions as, as, uh, as the, the, the guinea pig and has used it to sort of create solutions is what email that also does at free minds in terms of you know post data collection we that is a solution in itself as much as like people might be like oh well um it's not really as grand um um and you know maybe she can also like maybe explain it a little bit but also it can be a way as people can see that sometimes the solutions don't have to be as <laughs> you know, as extensive as they say, there are these things that we sort of bypass um, and sort of not give too much credit towards. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know, Imelda, maybe you can give us just a little bit of that insight of just how, you know, also what you do in terms of data collection is so important. And then, you know, we can, we can move on to the next part. Okay, um, so when it comes to, well, first I'll answer the question and then give a little bit more about the data collection as a problem solving solution. Um, yeah. I think a, a whole new set of eyes uh, can really change the perspective on a particular problem. Um, so for example, if it is a, a group of designers and only designers, you can introduce somebody like a musician or if it's a group of painters, you can introduce a sculptor. And this is kind of what I've come to learn, also connecting with the whole data collecting process is that the problem usually when looked at is constituted by just the eyes that are there. The eyes define the spectrum of the problem. When you want to see the problem in a different light, um, other things begin to appear. So with free mind sessions, the post data collection is after the session, what did people find out? I mean, what did people um, experience from the whole session? Um, and that, that was, that could be given, an answer to that could be given from 
free mind session organizing because it's not that we're removed from the session, it's that we're part of the session as well. But having it come from the people who experience the problem, okay, okay also this, the people who experience the problem could give the solution and uh, to what the problem is. So a different set of eyes um, gives a different problem the problem might not be the same as what the people who are encountering the problem are looking at. Um, it could be different in its own way. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how I would go about it. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I hope, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot that could go into this, but I, I, I like that conclusion and I hope that people will be able to see that um, and see that perspective because sometimes we really bypass the, the small things because as designers, we like to concentrate more on the bigger stuff. And, and you know, as we say, the small screws as Simon, you know, said is what also is going to help us in the long run be, build the big ship for example. But yeah, I wanted to know um, any sort of, as we are getting towards the end of the session and I just wanted guys to our amazing catalysts for, to, for this evening, please go around and just um, tell us, maybe put in your social medias and your businesses so that people can follow you and people and where people can find you and where people can just reach in reach in you know as we as since we are still isolated and we are still in lockdown and still have a cup you <laughs> and we still can meet in public maybe we can figure out a way in which you can still con continue to to get this connection going yeah take it um ladies first our lucy our lucy in the room, perhaps yeah so it's this has been like, I think this was, this was actually the conversation that I was actually looking into. These are actually my favorite types of conversations to have always, forever, always. Um, but what I've really taken away from this is that, is that we are all different people and we all have different ways of approaching um, things and even I got I got a lot from Simone and Imelda as to how they they make the problem they don't just make the problem um, like for yourself you make the problem for everybody to kind of like help you and solve which is like I kind of really like that and also from Jai, um, I wanted to add that, yeah, like even when I'm doing like a fashion, even when I'm doing like a shoot and a photography and even like the image, if I had it in my mind, there are so many times where, where like whatever I thought the picture was or whatever, how I thought the, ex the expectation, my expectation, as to the particular project and then the end result were always two completely different, two co like so far apart. Sometimes it used to make me so upset. Like, you know, like you really went in thinking one thing and then you, you get like a really, and there's so many times it has happened um, to the point where I had to unlearn um, how to how to make peace with and having no expectations when you come into a new project and 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 having the wiggle room to just be able to accept that there is the ideal and then there's reality and looking at the beauty and how even the process because you once you allow yourself to let in other people on your collaborative project you should also be willing to for it to turn into whatever it is that it's going to turn into and it is okay 
Yeah. So okay. I'm really happy about this session. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. We, I hope people take away that as goodie bags to remember that it is okay um, in that regard. Uh, Jai, Jai, tell us Jai. your final remarks and yeah. Um, yeah, final remarks would be obviously given the conversation we've had, um, creativity and collaboration go hand in hand. Um, that's what one thing that I would say, especially given the fact that we're living in a global pandemic at the moment. Um, and also as creatives, there's no way you can do whatever you're doing on your own. Your favorite musician has a team, your favorite actor has a team, your favorite designer has a team. So always collaborate, always be open, always be willing to learn. Remember, focus on the process. Um, and for me, basically, that's it. In a nutshell. <laughs> I like that. Focus on the process. I hope people take that away. Yeah. It's fun, actually. <laughs> So, and Simone, our final um, panelist for today, catalyst, as we like to call them here at Free Mind Sessions. Okay. So my, my, my think is uh, that uh, the phoenix burn from the ash and, uh, and the ash is good. So for example, like we, the two team of, the, of this evening was uh, the, the COVID make really the life difficult for, uh, for, uh, for designer, for creative and uh, uh, be in a group can be a problem because you lo it is difficult to keep ourselves uh, uh, like keep our soul and maybe or we keep too much or we we live too much and we don't know anymore who, who we are uh, but uh, from the problem from this problem from the, the difficulty to to work in group or from the problem of like Cannot uh, cannot really do some stuff because uh, you need the physical space. For example, just a stupid example. I don't know. I would like to speak more with uh, uh, with the body painter that I forgot the name. Uh, like people like to paint. Why you don't organize like painting session where people like paint ourselves the body? You teach how to paint the body. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe people maybe they don't go. I when I was in COVID in house, I started to print this object that I was I was shipping in Italy, and I finally my web the web the, my Instagram did shut down, but was uh, was a trial. Sometime uh, uh, from the problem, uh, every time I like to work in a, in a more problematic project, and not on a, because they give you more idea, they give you to think more. So yeah. Don't, uh, my point is that don't be scared from the problem. The problem for creativity is the solution, is the, <laughs> is what push us to move more, for, more, uh, more, more strongness. Because if you, everything is good, yeah, you just, <laughs> but if there is problem, is that some, is what, uh, yeah, what push to grow more and more and do something that is really different, something that really solve problem. Okay. Lindsay, well, you've been called upon to have more painting sessions. <laughs> Maybe that should be the, 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 the sort of conclusion. But yes, I'm, I'm, before we completely wrap up, Imelda, maybe just the final tip of the iceberg towards this. And then, yeah, I wanted to, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um... So my takeaway from this is just that as creatives, we're kind of all going through this process of unlearning and relearning and having to sort of deal with this whole implosion of what is going on in our creative lives, like the spark that's come up, or if we're in a creative um, block, what to do in that process. Um, because it's been a long time, it's been about a year plus, and we've gone through the cycles up and down of what is going on creatively. And um, most importantly, I think the whole, the whole um, aspect of the creative, coll co collective creative consciousness is that we should focus on the process. Um, as Lindsay said, the, the process is where we get our, 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 the push to keep going um as creatives so uh yeah it's been a great session 
Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Lindsay, is there some, your takeaways from this and uh, what you would be wanting people to be, you know, taking home today or being, um, being at their home already? <laughs> my takeaway is that I hope everyone has a, has a mental basket and they've been collecting these Easter eggs of, of, of information. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't have much else to add, um, except to just put put yourself into spaces that you, you you've imagined but are scared of. Um, there's there's a lot to learn there, and oh, and in this space more than ever, please be teachable. Um, let other people um, add to what you're doing because. As, as you've mentioned here, we're all unlearning. So in the process of unlearning, let's also be teachable as well. Um, yeah, and that's, and that's my, that's my make drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you know, honestly, what this feels to me and in conclusion, the two things that, you know, kind of what I wanted people to really let it, that sink in is the value of collaboration. Even the fact that we may be sitting at home we have the digital age in which we can st we can DM people and ask them to be like, yo, there's things I'm working on. Take a look at this. Um, what do you think? You know, it, it has become um, something that has brought us together, even though it doesn't feel like that physically. Um, and two, uh, the spiritual renaissance that happens when, you know, like what Sim Simon said, something very important from ashes is what, you know, how can I put it? It's almost like an awakening of some sort. And as creatives, that is like what feeds into our soul. Um, the minute we pick up that paintbrush, the minute we, you know, listen to that music or that beat, the minute that we are, we pick up the camera and take pictures, you know, um, our fellow Adrian was telling us that he's been doing this since he was four. And it's like almost like, like something like the back of his hand and these things that we need to cultivate more so that we also are the best versions of ourselves when we meet others and 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 put in that effort and plug in so i think that comes that is our we're coming to the end of our session today our first <laughs> virtual session i just i mean it almost feels very surreal we didn't think this would happen but it did, and I hope that um, we can have more of these. I think this was like our sort of trial and error, but I think we did well. I don't know about you guys. I, I, I think we did um, amazing. And the people that are on here, we appreciate you so much because you, you so just much. jumped on. You, you, took, you <laughs> took a leap of faith with us and you said, yeah, we are going to join you guys and we're going to crack this up and, and make it a good time. But also having those conversations that I think were necessary to be had today and forevermore. Amen. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, as always, guys, um, I would say get home safely, but we like to conclude by saying, as always, stay free minded. <laughs> um, and thank you so much again. Uh, yeah, I'll hand, I think now it will be, I'll hand it to the guys of Nairobi Design Week. They need to say, uh, a little something, you know, there are our partners, we have to ensure that they have the space. But yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the space. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Nishamba, Lindsay, Imelda, Free Mind Sessions, all our guests, and everyone who's tuned in on YouTube. The oh, yeah. chat has been live. It's been amazing. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for all that insights. Let's stay free minded. Yes, yeah, stay, stay free-minded. <laughs> so, so, so if you go to NairobiDesignWeek.com, you can see where we are in the festival. We're currently on Thursday. And as soon as these live streams finish, they go live on the website here. So that's what we're doing tonight as well. So this is where the Free Mind Sessions live stream will be. And that's where it will live. Tomorrow we have Under Our Skin coming up at 6 p.m. They're gonna be talking about the coming film festival. See how you can apply for those film creators and creatives. Come and join us for a nice informative session. 6 p.m. East African time. 
Yeah, and then on Saturday, we've got the design repeat party. So all the amazing creatives who have signed up, uh, and just check out the talent on eDesignRepeat.com. Uh, we can't wait to have some live performances. Again, 6 p.m. East Africa time on Saturday, the 10th of April. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening or wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye.